Okay. Night two. You know what it is. Before I get started, I have to address something. And this is not to chew out somebody. This is not to say anything's bad. But I got to address something. One of the people that comment below, I believe your name is John. One, I want to say thank you for caring. Honestly, what you stated, you're saying, dude, you need to change something. Change the title of your videos. Put more thumbnails. Do some intros. You've been grinding for so long and you deserve way more than what you're getting. That means a lot to me. I thank you for that. But, and I do mean but. If you've been around for a while, and I believe, you, believe your name is John, and anyone else has been here more than a year, if you know me for more than a couple of years, you know how I function. I came on this channel for depression and anxiety to try and work it out, along with loving pro wrestling. I've loved it since I was a kid, since I was a little child. And I have to feel it. And... I don't say this often. I don't like talking about myself. I hate when I do. But when I know there's been some type of disruption in the content or the, the way the content's been, I usually address it. And for John, just in case you've only been here a short amount of time, and I'm not saying you haven't. Maybe you've been here years. But if you remember, I wasn't doing very well last year. I had been not myself at all. And it's spread all the way into this year. Of course, it's a lot better now. It's not like it's here. It's dropped down to here. Last year, my anxiety and depression was here. It was pretty high. It was stress. I'm not going to explain what it was. That's something that's private and I don't want to talk about it. But if John, and I believe that's your name. If you wonder where the thumbnails, what, what about doing thumbnails? What about changing the names, what about doing intros. If you've been around a while, I used to do intros for Impact. I did it for SmackDown at one point. I did it for AEW at one point. I did one for, for NWA. I used to do intros. I only recently just started doing thumbnails because I do artwork now. So I now become more interested in learning how to do thumbnails. So what few thumbnails you've seen, they're the beginnings of me learning how to do it. So, I have been working on that, but I have to feel it. If I'm not feeling it, I just can't do it. I can't force myself to do it. If I do, bye-bye. And I got to admit right now that that's happened to my other channel. If you don't know, particularly you, the one I'm talking to, I have another channel not related to wrestling called MMD Amateur Hour. Now, that's a 3D animated show that does animated dancing. I know it's what. Yes, I have one. In fact, I'll leave a connection. I haven't put anything up in eight months because of the stress last year. So if you wonder why, if anyone who watched the channel wonder why it's stagnant, it's because I was under so much stress that something was really irking me. I, I had to stop. Right now, I have not been able to go back. It's like I have writer's block for doing my anime right now. I'm trying to get back into it. So I got to feel it like this. It's got to be like lightning in a bottle. When it's on, like a, t a switch that goes like this, I'm on. But when it's off, I'm off. And no matter how much I want to, I can only go with what I got. So I'm sorry. So if, if you don't like it, I I'm really sorry about that. But if you do understand, thank you. Now, let's start tearing this show apart. Because when you look at Gold Rush, and I want to make this very clear, I saw most to a few pieces of Raw, so I know what happened with Carmelo Hayes, and that will be mentioned at the end of this review. But when you look at some of this show, you will notice that something was off. I said it last week, and I'm saying it again. You can tell this is not Shawn Michaels booking correctly. It, it, cor I'm, I don't want to explode here. Let's go into it. We got Thea Hayes versus Tiffany Stratton for the NXT Women's title. Now, this was booked correctly. This opened the show. No problem. We got Thea getting her options. 
to try and become champion. She did a good job. I will say that Thea Hale, being at 19 years old, starting at 18, she's come a certain amount of, certain amount way. I'm not saying it was great amount yet, because she's only been in the business for a very short time. But I will say that they are giving her more to work with. They are believing in her. And seeing this match, I felt that she did a commendable job. I'm not saying she is better than Tiffany Stratton. Tiffany is obviously the new Mandy Rose. It is obvious. If you don't think it, you got another thing coming. She's the new Mandy. That is what she is. That's all she's going to be. She's the replacement for Mandy. That's what we got. So when you see this, and it's a decent match, I think it was actually better than decent for, for what it was. You go, okay, you see a little bit of Tiffany, no, Tiffany having to fight, having to claw a little bit. She was in trouble. You see that not only Duke was out there, you see that Charlie Dempsey was out there. You see a little bit of Drew Guat was out there. And in the end, after getting tapped out, which she did not win... Tiffany managed to beat her because Drew interfered by messing with the ref and Charlie was doing the stupid thing by grabbing the rope and trying to pull it away from Tiffany. Then, here's where things got interesting. After it was over, they blamed her. And that is Drew and Charlie. You get... Not only do you get a Duke getting his ass whooped, you then you see... Mr. Chase himself, Andre, come back and everyone was cheering for him, which I'm actually glad to see him again. I like him. So now the question's going to be about Thea. The question is, will Thea stay with Chase you or go to the other side? Because if she does not go to the other side, they got to find someone to work on their side. So it will be somebody, unless it's Tiffany. Possibly Tiffany Stratton will be the one that's going to work with Charlie Dempsey and Drew Gluad. Or it will be a Thea Hall who's going to flip sides and go there. I don't know, but you got some below. Next, we get Dyad versus Blade and Inofi. I always mispronounce his name, Inofi. Guys, this is where the where it goes off the rails because of not the match but what happened afterward now the match itself was not bad at least until Inofi botched trying to jump on I can't remember who it was I think it wasn't Coffee's back it was his partner's back I can't remember and he tried to springboard himself off his back and he slipped off his damn back and splatted really badly luckily he didn't hurt and break his neck it was that bad of a splat but in the end, what do we get? We get Stacks coming out and basically spearing Inofi, not Blade, Inofi, into the steps and Blade gets pinned. And I'm going, okay, what just happened? What the hell was that? Because he literally missed the one that he was aiming for purposely. Because you could see he missed on purpose. Then we get... The, the, the business end of that last segment that led for them. And that was Tony D'Angelo and a member of Gallus. I believe it was Joe Coffey's dad, brother, not dad. But you know, you know the reason why I'm botching here. One, Joe's brother is much bigger than him. Makes him look like his dad. Two, basically Stax set up Tony D'Angelo in jail. This made no freaking sense, guys. If you say, no, it makes perfect sense. How? How? How does it make sense when Stax was elevated to underboss and there was no conflict between the two before he went into jail? There's the problem. Understand, if there had been conflict between the two, if Tony D'Angelo had been treating Stax badly, like crap, then that would be something entirely different. Because all that time, Stax sacrificed himself for Tony. But guess what? Tony sacrificed himself just as much as Stax did. And it made no damn sense. 
to have Stax turn on Tony when legitimately there was no conflict there. There was no one there. There was no woman that was interfering with it. There was no money that was interfering with it. He can't just say that they tried to go for the tag titles. The last time they tried, Stax was the one who got, the, got pinned, not Tony. Stax did, if I remember correctly. So who was he blaming? It makes no sense. This doesn't make any sense for booking-wise. Why would you do it? Why? Now, mind you, maybe Gallus is trying to screw with Tony when he gets out and mess with Stax. You could go there. And that could be if we're lucky where they're going to. But to be honest, when they show the audio of Stax, if they, if they had not played the audio for Stax, you could have gone down that road of said, well, Tony's being tricked. What do we get from Coffee's, oh, Joe Coffee's brother? His phone, and you hear Stax's voice. And I'm going, what the blue fuck is that? That is the most stupidest thing I've seen. There was no conflict between the two. There was not a woman between the two. The last time they had a chance at gold, if I remember correctly, Stax ate the damn pin. If I'm right, I could be wrong, but you guys can tell me below if you remember the last time when they tried to go for the titles. If I'm right, Stax ate the pin. Tony tried to save him, protect him, but Stax ate the pin anyway. So, why? I'm just saying, let's move on. Next, the Heritage Cup between Dragon Lee and Frazier. I'm Nathan Frazier. I'm going to tell you this. It was a good match. I liked it. He had two beautiful women in both corners. And I can't remember um, Valentina's friend. I don't remember her name. I always keep forgetting it. I've only seen her a couple of times. It was nice to see them. It was nice that it was that. They had two beautiful women in the sides trying to help both guys. They're both good guys. The only problem I had was Dragon Lee in his short trunks. I kind of like him in longer trunks. I don't know why he dressed like that. He looked like he was told to wear it. Because he normally doesn't wear stuff like that as far as I could tell. Not that he doesn't wear tight whiteies, you know. But the match was fine. In the end, Frazier won. So the question is, who's next? It looks like Axiom wants it now. Because Axiom said to a scripts, Reggie, that all I'm thinking about is that damn Heritage Cup. He wants it. But then you look at the, um, I forgot the name of this, um, the new group of Noel and Dar, the, um, I, I, I forgot the name of the team. <laughs> you know the reason why I can't remember when we're talking about Lash Legends, Jackson, um, 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 Masha, as well as Nolan Dar, it doesn't feel like much. I'm not feeling it when it comes to them. I'm not feeling their, their faction. There's something about the faction that I'm just not feeling. And I can't remember the name of the faction for some reason. And then it finally hit me, I'm not feeling the faction. Nolan Dar's acting like a little bitch because he's not getting, he lost his, his Heritage Cup. And I would expect someone as great as Nolan Dar to be a little more aggressive. And he's acting like a little bitch, sucking on the little lollipop that Jackson gave him, which I can understand. She's a gorgeous piece of ass. But then those two were stupid enough to start saying, well, now that there's unified titles, you girls don't stand a chance against us. And I'm going like, well, there goes fresh meat for Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. They open their mouth, they're going to be getting their shot, and they're going to get their asses whooped. Badly. One of those two is going to get their ass spanked. And it's not going to be in the fun way when, you know, you're going to... I'm, I'm not trying to be sexual, but I'm, I'm being honest. That's what we get. And I'm not feeling the faction. I'm just, I'm just not. I don't know why. Other than they're, they're just not gelling that well. I believe it's Nolan Dar. Nolan Dark just not fitting in that persona that he put himself in. I'm just saying. Let's move on. G.D. Golan and Keanu James. 
What the fuck was that? What 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 was that? What was that ending? Guys, one, the match was not that great. It was okay, but not that great. And there was some, several botches during that match. Second, when it came down to it, the fans were not super loud until near the end. So it was obvious that they weren't feeling it at first. And they had to build up into it, which could be a good thing, but it's not that great. Third was the ending. Gigi Golden won, but once you see Keanu James grabbing at her purse, tried to use it during the match, which was kind of stupid on her part. Why would she, in the middle of the match, in front of the damn ref, try to nail Gigi? For what? It made no sense for her to do that because Keanu James doesn't act like that. She doesn't reach a point of aggression that in front of a ref, she basically will try to hurt someone. In other words, use her purse to hurt somebody. She tries to use her head. She doesn't do that. She's supposed to be a mogul. She's supposed to be a model. And she's acting like a stupid idiot. And then on top of it, once she lost, she nails Gigi in the back. She takes out of her purse, her big ass purse, her big, big ass purse, where my hands are, it was like this big, two cans of fucking paint. That one looked like it was orange, the other one looked like it was blue. What the blue fuck was that? I could understand if they had a long-standing feud and they were like if Kiana James was JC James and she wanted to humiliate her so badly that she decided to do it because they had such a long lengthy feud. That's understandable. But here makes no sense. It's not like this is the fifth match and Kiana James has never been able to beat her or the fourth or the third. This is the one match they had together, and she basically lost, had paint in her bag for no reason but to just dump it on her. It had no sense of being behind it. This was not proper booking. It made no sense. All right. A few things I am not going to cover here. I'm not going to talk about Mustafa Ali and when he's going up against Tyler Bates. I'm leaving that until next week. I am not going to talk about Diamond Mind and, well, I got to have to, I got to talk about them. There's two things I'm going to talk about. I'm leaving everything else. I'm leaving the Von Wagner and Stone alone. I'm not talking about it. But I am going to talk about the... NXT Underground. I gotta say something about it. Guys, what the fuck are they doing? You have Thorpe working with the Olympic gold medalist that's currently on NXT. I don't remember his name. And he helped to train him to get him ready for Damon Kemp. But why in the blue fuck are they doing a, a raw Underground-esque Underground for NXT when they've done things like this without it? They just used what they did before in NXT where they just did a regular match, but it was under the rules of the MMA. Who would come up with something like this? Now, mind you, back in 2020, it was Triple H who came up with the, with the Raw Underground to try and change things up, but Vince completely A6'd it. That was not Vince who came up with it. That was Triple H. But I don't, I'm not saying it worked. I'm just saying it was different. But I'm not saying it worked. Vince screwed that over. Now we got it here. They showed scenes of the Raw Underground. Now they're doing NXT Underground, which is not necessary. It's not. I do not understand why don't they just do a regular match like they've done before and just do MMA rules like they've done before. It's more easier to do. It makes better sense, to be honest. Because once they take down everything, it, it, it will feel more substantial. Because you'll have the people there. No. They're going to do something like it did back in the Thunderdome era. Where there's only going to be basically wrestlers there. And it's going to feel empty. They did that because pretty much they had no option. They had no option. They did it. So, there you go. And... 
I got to say this. When it came to the final match, let's make this 100% clear. I'm not griping on the match itself. I am not. Baron Corbin did good. I truly believe this was the best match of the night. He actually did a very good job. Honestly, I know people will say that it was a Heritage Cup match, and I can understand it. But here, you could see when Baron Corbin really wants to do something, he does. Look, he became the Lone Wolf. He used his original music, wearing one of the original t-shirts that he started with when he started NXT, when they started producing them, I believe. And he started acting like the Lone Wolf. This was something I wish he'd done weeks upon weeks before. Went back to the old music. Wearing a tire like he was when he was a lone wolf. And having attitudes similar to the lone wolf. Uh, Gregor. I forgot what his first name was. Um, but the last name was Gregor. That's what he was using back then. I liked it. But you had him going up against Carmelo Hayes. Who lost on Raw. I didn't watch all of Raw. But I know he lost. I checked. I did see that match, and I did see Amon, so I, I also saw Ciampa facing Miz when he shouldn't have. Raw was garbage. If you like Raw, more power to you. I'm saying it right now. Raw was freaking garbage. I couldn't stand it. In fact, I missed part of it by falling asleep. Something was telling me, go to sleep. I was getting ready for Raw. I was going to watch it. I was actually thinking review it because it was the last Raw before Money in the Bank, and I'm going like... No. Why do I want to just go to sleep? I went to sleep halfway through it. I woke up. I saw bits of the, what, the, what was left of it. And it was garbage. And now, you see this. Carmelo Hayes jobs on Raw. It does not help him. Then when you have this match, if you saw Raw, you're going like, well, there's one or two things going to happen. Either he's going to lose again, and it's going to go to Baron Corbin, which means he's getting bitched out completely by Vince. And I'm saying it clearly. If he had lost this match and lost on Raw, Vince don't give a fuck about how good Carmelo is in the ring. He don't think nothing of him. But then, if Carmelo here wins, what the blue fuck was the point of that match on Raw? It doesn't improve his character. It doesn't really help him to be recognized on Raw. People were not happy on Raw when they saw him lose. He was a freaking champion. If anybody says, oh, come on, he just lost. It's not going to hurt him. Yes, it did. It did hurt him. He appears on Raw and it looks like most of the people recognize him. And he's a freaking champion. You know who else was a freaking champion who went to Raw? And then got bitched out and then got fired by Vince and then brought back and looks like he might get fired again. Kyrian Cross. Do you remember what he was wearing as the gladiator Kyrian Cross? Not the badass Kyrian Cross with no Scarlet Bardot that is now by his side? This was stupid. It made no freaking sense. For him to lose on Raw. And then it made him look worse when he was on NXT. Because pretty much. Yes, we knew that he may lose. But I didn't expect him to lose. But then looking at Baron Corbin. Who reset himself back to the original version he was. When he was first in the original NXT. Before it became black and gold like everyone knows. This was an opportunity for him to really expand himself. And he had to lose. This show was booked badly and now the last thing I'm going to talk about will have to be about schism I got to I don't want to but I got to forget about when it comes to the creed look what they've done with schism what was the point to break them up other than to possibly throw them onto the main roster you already know what happened with Schism. You already know that they had to sit down. You know the Creeds came out for no apparent reason. It didn't need to even come out. They should be happy to falling apart. But they come out for no reason. And now they want to match. Joe Gacy has made it very clear. Next week a match. You win. We win. We stay. 
You lose, you leave. We, well, not me and Alba Rain, but Dyad leaves. And they're angry. Schism was one of the most interesting, interesting things that they had. And now you're breaking it up. For what? Does that mean Dyad is going to be treated well in the main roster? Or are they going to go into free agency? For no reason. They didn't even need to say anything. They could have just marked them as free agency. They go to Raw. They go to SmackDown. And they go to NXT. And they could have ro rotated around. What do you think might happen if they lose? What do you think? Do you actually believe they're going to get treated right? Do you believe the Creeds will be treated right? Do you believe Brutus and, and Julius are going to be treated right? This is stupid. What happened to the damn draft? Why are they being given this now? Before Money in the Bank. Why are they now being possibly thrown off of NXT either one? This show did not feel like a Shawn Michaels booked show. It felt like Vince. Because it was chaotic. It was stupidly booked. Things that should not be done are being done. You're not saying that Alva Rain is with a Joe Gacy. But it's implied because she's talking for him. It sounds like she's in control now. It, it, this show feels completely rebooked by Vince. And as I said earlier, because I had to stop myself, we now know. Because it's already been reported by not one news outlet. outlet. I'm getting angry. Not one news outlet. At least four that I've seen. Body Slam News. NoDQ.com. Um, I believe that another one. I forgot what the other one is. There's at least two more. I've forgotten them right now because it's annoying me. That we have reports that Vince interfered with Raw heavily. By remote. And now Nick Khan... And Triple H together are going to try to convince Vince to stop interfering with booking. What did I tell you? Before anyone else. Who told you before anyone else? Who? Who? Before JD. Before Alex. In December and November, I said there was something wrong. Before either one of them said anything in January February. And I'm not taking anything from them. They had to still get proof of it. I could see it even before them. And they also saw something, but they didn't want to go there. At least not until they had proof. So I understand them not doing it. I'm not a reporter. I'm not a wrestling reporter. I'm just a guy with a camera. They have to have proof before they do it. I could be wrong. They have to be right. But it is obvious that if anyone else like myself saw it well into November and December, that there was something wrong with the show, they had the proof to get it. And now Vince is now going to be asked, not demanded. He has to be asked because of the position he's in to please stop interfering and book ahead of time instead of on the same day the show is because they showed a report that everyone was frustrated because Vince completely ruined everything within a few hours of the show beginning. There were several matches supposed to be done. What, what were we supposed to get? A triple threat with LA Knight? He got it with Ray. What happened to the match between Bailey and Chelsea Blackheart? She was supposed to have a shot at her, her money in the bank shot, her position. That got axed. Look for yourself, guys. This ain't right. And it's just me. Peace.